we're going to be doing a video series on queries in databases, particularly Microsoft Access. And this is video one, where we just cover the basics of what a query is and how we can make a basic query. Now, in our previous video series, we would have learned about tables and what tables are. Now, tables are the places where we store all the information in a database. We store information about particular topics in different tables, and that stores massive amounts of data. Now, when you've got massive amounts of data, it's very difficult to find exactly the particular data that you want. And so that's why we have an aspect of databases called queries. And what queries allow us to do is to display just the relevant data that we want based on some criteria or conditions. So we can get just the information that you want, and then we can actually save these results to view them later or edit them or to use them in reports and so on. So that's the benefit of queries, that we can actually take all these massive amounts of data and get just the information that we want. Let's use an example. If you go to the bank, the bank has a database with everyone's records and transactions and all the details of what things that they've done. But when you go onto an ATM or go into the bank, they will bring up just your record. So they will run a query which runs just to get your specific information with your account details and your transactions. And that way they can only deal with yours. They don't just sift through massive amounts of data to find just your in, in, in particular records. They can just get your specific data. So that's the benefits of a query. So when we deal with queries, there are some things that we need to be able to compare something to when we talk about the criteria or the conditions. Now, the operators that we use, you will probably be familiar with. So, for example, you can check if something's equal to something. So if we've got a, a field called num payments, we can see if the num payments is a three. If it's equal to, we use the equal to symbol. And all these symbols will be familiar to you. For example, if we want to check if something's bigger, we want to say the greater than symbol. We want to find all the outstanding payments that are more than a thousand. Um, if we want to find smaller than fields, like for example, if they paid less than 200, we use the less than symbol. Maybe you want larger than and equal to, if we include the number that we're referring to, so outstanding must be greater than or equal to 500, or we want less than equal to, where the number of payments is less than two. So we've got all those operators. Now the other one that we might have forgotten about, if you can compare two things to say that they are equal, you can also compare things to see that they are not equal to. And if you remember the not equal to sign in computers is normally the less than symbol and the greatest than symbol making like a diamond or a kite symbol. So just remember not equal to, shine bright like a diamond, just think of that. And then you've got your not equal to symbol. Now, if we just go look at those examples there, you'll notice that the last one, division, has double quotes around the letter, but all the others don't have double quotes. And that's why, because different data types need to be referenced in different ways. All the previous examples have number fields, either a currency field or a number field, where that last field was a text field. So how do we know when do we need to use what for the different data types? Well, let's just review that quickly. So if we've got numbers, we can just leave the numbers as is. We can say it's equal to 200 or less than 200. We don't have to change anything to the number. So that's easy. But when we get to text, then we must remember you must put double quotes around the text. So if we want the surname field to be the word Smith, then we must put Smith around double quotes. Now, when it comes to dates, the first thing I want to remind you about dates, if we're dealing with a date field, you can't say that a date field, like if you want to find all the dates uh, before the year 2020, you can't say less than 2020 because 2020 isn't a date. That's a number. So you must actually refer to dates when you are referring to the criteria. So for example, if you want before 2020, then you must be before the first of the first of 2020, the first of January. And you'll notice there that when we refer to dates, you see that they put hashes around the dates. So that's how you must refer to dates. You must refer to the whole date and nothing but the date. So make sure that you mention the day, the month, the year when you're referring to dates, and then the dates will be in hashtags. And then if you've got a yes, no field, um, that's very easy. You can, it might seem like it's text, but it's not. You can just say that the field is equal to yes or equal to no with no uh, double quotes around it. Just leave it as it is. Or you could use the words true or false. That will also work. And there, there's no double quotes. There's no hashtags around it. You just leave it as it is. So now that we know this, let's go try a couple of examples. Now, over here, we've got our database that we were working with in the previous examples, um, in the pre previous series. And this is TBL data, and there's a whole bunch of information that we stored, first name, so on, and there we go. So we can see what the data looks like. It's very important to know what the data looks like in the main table, because if we're going to do queries, we need to refer to it correctly. 
based on the data type and the type of information that we're looking for. So if we want to create our first query, now it's very easy, you just come over here to the word create and you'll see there's a whole bunch of options. We're going to come here to the query options. I'm going to go to query design and then this box will pop up and it'll say which uh, table do we want to have. Sometimes the box will appear over here on other versions. So you just click on the table you want. Oh, we're going to be referring to the data table. So I'm going to double click on that and it adds it to the ones that we are using and I can just close this add tables option. If you didn't do it correctly and you want to go add more tables, you can just go click on this button and it'll get you back to the add tables options. Now, sometimes you don't want to display all the fields in a table. Maybe you just want a list of all the, the names and the surnames. Then over here, we can select which field we want. I want the surname field first and then I want the name field. So there's the first thing that we can do. Okay, and that way, and then we can run the query. You can either run it or you can go and look at the data sheet view. Both of them do the same thing technically. So there we go. I've got a nice list of all the surnames and names of all the people in the table. I don't need all that other information. So that's a nice little query there. Maybe I want to sort the information. Well, let's go and sort. I'm going to go back to design view and we can edit this table and maybe I want to sort it by surname. So if I sort it by surname and now if I run it, yeah, we can see it's a nice alphabetical list of all the people in the list okay now just a reminder when you are sorting um, sometimes if you've got multiple sort criteria you want to sort first by surname then by first name and so on it must read from left to right so whatever is first sorted so there you can see surname is ascending if I go and make a first name ascending it will first do surname in ascending and any surnames that are the same will then shift to the next criteria which will be our first name if these two were in a different order so if I drag this one first okay it will first do by first name and then any names that are the same it will then move to surname and you can see that over here see it does all the names I don't think there are any names that are there's two Dylans and then you can see that the Dylans are sorted by surname once we get to the same name so just remember when you are sorting make sure that you get your order correct so there we go so there are your your nice little list of names and now if we want to save this query so we can access it at a later time we can just click on the save button and it will ask us to name the query now like we did with tables we did tbl data um, we can call this tb oh, not tbl we not this isn't a table we can say qry because this is a query this way we know the difference between queries and tables and i could call this an alpha list just for alphabetical list and then you click ok and then once you've done that there you've got your query that you can access at a later stage so if i close this and i want to go open up the query i can just double click on it and there we go we've got all our data that we saved and then if i close it and i want to go change it i can also right click on it and go to design view and that way i can change the, the properties here or i can just go through that option there so those are your options available to you for your list and any data that changes in the original table will then also be reflected in the query so you don't have to keep updating it anytime you change something in the original table this query will run the correct data on the original on the data that is currently there so let's go make another query let's go do some other stuff some examples we're going to go to design if you remember correctly we're going to um, not add a query we're going to add a table we want to do based on tbl data and what do we want to do well we want all the surnames and we want all the names of now if we look at the data i want to find all the people that made three payments so you see there's a number of payments i want to find just the people that made three payments so if i go back to my query i'm at my query here, i'm going to go i'm going to select a number of payments boom there it is and i'm going to put you under criteria here is where you put the criteria so you can say equals three okay because it says equal you can actually just put the three and it'll it'll just leave it like that that's fine as well so equals to three those are both okay so equals to three so the number of payments this column must be equal to three we don't care what the surname is we don't care what, or what the first name is we don't care what the surname is no criteria there as long as the number of payments is equal to a three and if we go view this query you can see i just have a list of those that paid three if you don't want to see this field you just want the names and surnames you don't want to actually see this data but you want to use it as a criteria then you can click on this show button to not show it so you can see like i've got the same data just we've hidden that that field that's got the criteria just take note though if you hide a field and there's no criteria in it like if i hide first name you see there's no criteria 
it will actually when I go back it'll take it it'll probably take it away when I save it so it sometimes does do that so just be wary of that maybe I want all the people that made one two or three payments that means it must be less than three so my number of payments is less than three so I can run it boom and there we go there you can see it took the surname away let's, let's display it so we can see if that's correct there's all the ones twos and threes well we said less than three so it didn't include three so I must go equal to three if I want it to be including three so there we can see you can look over here at the number of results when it pops up it'll tell you that there are 63 records in this query and you can keep saving this as different things I'm gonna just keep in here just to save time um, some other examples maybe we want to see all those um, in the outstanding column that were above a thousand so we can do that and so those are all the outstanding amounts that are above a thousand so there we can see the values there there are 37 records maybe I don't want the people that have paid one payment so now if you've got multiple criteria like for example outstanding and you've got a number of payments you can actually just keep going and just so I want all those that paid a hundred or more than a thousand in um, I have more than a thousand outstanding but they have only made one payment so therefore I want this to be greater than or equal to 1000 but I want number of payments to equal to 1. Do you see I've got this it reads this whole row as a single row so this is one criteria any surname any first name but only those where the outstanding is greater than 1000 and the number of payments equals 2 or 1. And there we go so there's the number the outstanding payments those are the people that have paid have got more than 1000 outstanding and that have only made one payment so you can have lots of criteria like that going across. Um, we also said let's take some of this stuff out um, if we want for example the surnames now I don't know what surnames we've got here we I remember there was a if we look here there's lots of surnames let's try the name Kirby so let's say I want to find all those with the surname Kirby there'll probably only be one so now remember I told you our text must be in double quotes now the beauty of access is that if it ident I can identify that you've got text and it will sometimes put the double quotes in for you so I've just typed in the word Kirby I didn't put double quotes I click away and it put the double quotes in for me so sometimes you don't even need to remember it it'll just do it for you that's fancy so there you can see there's no people with the surname Kirby maybe it's because the first name is Kirby maybe I read that completely wrong so let's put it in double quotes Kirby and there's still are uh, because there's probably the Kirby's probably paid more than one that's probably that criteria is probably the problem so any person with the surname of Kirby still no Kirby and anyone with the name of Kirby yo I'm really trying to get an example that works here so there we go Whew, thank goodness we finally found someone called Kirby in our database so there we go so obviously you need to know your data and what you're looking for so that's a field where there is text if we want to find all the people that are married okay so we can come here to we can change the number of payments we can change to the married field remember this is a yes no field do you see it's a little tick blocks that's a yes no so when I click on married I want all those that the married is a tick which means I want it to be true you just type it as it is and there we got all the ticks and if we want all those that are not married we would make it false and you could also use the word yes or no and that would also work Boom. so you see if I type in the word no it will also give you the same results okay so there we go that's the married now let's try that date field we've got a, a birth date so let's go there we take that criteria out so we can see all the data we've got lots of dates now we want all those born after the year 2000 so then we must say greater than 2000 now that's wrong because 2000 isn't date what's the first day so anyone who was born after the or in the year 2000 or after so that means they were born on the first day of the year 2000 or later so it's greater than remember dates get bigger as we go later so 2001 is the first month of 2001 was the first day in 2000 so we want all those that are greater than uh, than the first day of the first month of the year 2000 so that means 2000 or more now you notice I didn't put in the hashes right well just like with the double quotes you'll see if I click away it puts the hashes in for me that's amazing we don't have to even remember that it'll do it for us so there you can see all the dates of all the people that were born in the year 2000 or later okay so there we go so that's how you reference a date
Okay. So what happens if you've got multiple criteria in the same field? So that's what we're going to look at here. So for example, if we've got two criteria and we want them both to be true, then we're going to use an operator called the AND operator. So we'll put AND between the two criteria. Now, if we want, for example, a criteria where we want either this criteria or that criteria, so it's either, then we would use the OR criteria. And what happens, there's another thing, what happens if it's so nice to write a criteria, but you want the opposite of it? So this is the criteria that you want, but you want the opposite. Well, in that case, you can use the NOT. So let's do a couple of examples using these operators quickly. So let's try the AND operator first. So let's say we've got outstanding. Now we want all the fields where we want to find any any value between 1,000 and 2,000 only, or 1,000 and 1,500. Let's try that. So if that's the case, then we want outstanding to be greater than equal to 1,000. And at the same time, I want it to be less than equal to 1,500. So there we go. Let's have a look at it. Boom. So between... 1000 and 1500 so if I run that query you can see all the outstanding amounts between those two values there's nothing above 1500 there's nothing below a thousand so those are the types of things that you can do with an and okay you could also do this with for example a date maybe we want only those that were born in the year 2000 or yeah. so if that's the case we can say birth date let's make it a bit bigger so we can see it it must be bigger than the first day in the year 2000 which is the 1st of January and then it and at the same time it must be less than the last day in Jan in 2000 which was the 12th month the 31st and if I click away it will add in the double the hashes for us so that's so when you're using between two values you can use the and so the first date and that date it means between those two so if we run that you can see there's all the people that were born in the year 2000 only Okay, so that's an AND. Now what happens, we saw that there's a division. We want only those in division A or C. They can't be in both A and C at the same time. It can either be one or the other. So the division must be an A or a C. Okay, so if I say A or C, it puts it in double quotes for us. There's only the A's and C's. And let's say if number of payments, the number of payments, let's say we only want those who made one, three, or seven payments. So we can say it's a one or a three or a seven. Now, because that's text, we can just leave it as numbers. So there we go. And I run it. There we go. Only the one, threes, or, and there's no one with the seven. So there we go. So that's how you can do your ors. Now, let's say we want all those um, that did not make three payments. So you could say not equal to three. That would work, okay? So, or you could say not equal to three, okay? And if you run that, you'll get the exact same results, okay? So not is just another way of doing it. So you don't always use the not, but it is a possibility. So if you want the opposite of what you are looking for, so yeah, so you can do that. So if you want all those that are not Kirby, then you can say instead of not equal to Kirby, you can say we don't want those that are not Kirby, please. I don't want anyone, that, everyone that's not Kirby, and there's everyone that's not Kirby. Okay, so there we go. So those are your options if you've got multiple criteria in the same like little field. Okay, so now that you've learned the different operators, you've learned how the data types must be used, and you've learned how to have multiple criteria in each field. In our next video, we'll discuss more examples of things you can do in these wonderful queries. For more videos in this video series, as well as other videos on queries, please go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, we'd love to hear from you, leave a comment, and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.